Yeah. See, I thought everybody knew I was on cocaine. You did? Yeah. <laughs> everybody knew I was on cocaine. Oh, you shit, they know. They look at me. They look at me. Ah, they know. They know. They know. I got bugged out. Yeah. My God, Mike. <laughs> so you got to break down your life. So we're still the dirty Mike. Mike. And who are you today? Listen, Ray, I'm I'm a guy that's um just wanna establish my relationship with my children now. You know, me and my wife are cool now. We don't beef no, we don't fight, we, we work as a team now, but I'm pretty much establishing my relationship with my sons and stuff, letting them know it's all about sacrificing and just, you know, dedicating your life to something that you really wanna achieve something in and then after that maybe you have to achieve your goal then you can hang around and party and have fun but you have to establish yourself first before you even you know i, I can't even enjoy myself for when i first understood what um sacrifice was and what the what the prizes was to, from sacrifice i could i can't imagine not wanting to um achieve things in life i became very um what's the word very ambitious as a young kid i just can't understand at 20, 18, 19, I've, I've, I've established so much of my kids. They don't have that kind of drive. I want them to have that drive and believe in themselves. You what know? do you think is missing from kids today having that drive at 20 that we had growing up? Hey, um, I didn't stop. Mike. That, well, I, let me say, I, I don't know. Maybe it's mindful. Maybe um, our pampering them. Maybe. I think, I think me... And my, I think we allowed them to have everything they needed as a young kid and probably a little bit more. They able to go go out the country and travel and go on trips and stuff whenever they want. Maybe I'm um, not a little bit too much, but then I don't know. I just, I don't know. I mean, we love our, I have a daughter and I love her with all my heart and you put money away and you do this and you that, but. Yeah, but I have a son that, you know, if, his, if he has drug debt, the guy has called his mother and said, well, such and such owes me money for this, and she has to pay him. You know, this kid is the little spoiled kid, and we always pay, make sure he has his apartment and stuff, and he never have, he never have to worry about it, or struggle for anything. And I, no one's ever given me anything but an opportunity, you know? And I'm saying this is probably my fault, you know? And you know what I would do to a kid like my kid? If I saw my kid... If I used to even saw him walking the street, you know what I would do to him? What? Bad stuff. You don't want your kids on the street at all? No. Never to repeat what you did at all? Not even a little bit. You made a commitment to that. You said, fuck yeah. that. But sometimes I worry maybe they need they needed a little struggle in life. You know? You make yeah. them mow the lawn. You make them paint no, the lawn. No, no. They don't do that stuff. See, crazy. that's my mother instilled that in me. Even in her fucking, uh, she was a functioning alcoholic, but she wouldn't just give me a 20. Like, if I came to her and said, I want that toy down the block, she would go, all right, sweep the front, take the garbage out, wash the bathroom. Do I got to clean the bathroom? You got to clean the bathroom. Fill up the beer case and ask Peppy if he needs help in the kitchen. It would take me an hour and a half, and she'd throw me a 20. So I knew if I hustled her for a, you know what I'm saying? Like I knew, and that, and I was spoiled till my mother died, and then I had to find the realities of the world. My mother used to bring her boyfriends over and stuff, and when they go to bed, they get tired. We used to always rob his pockets. And shit. <laughs> All the men that came and she brought now, we always robbed them when they fell asleep. Trust me, I robbed a lot of pockets, but they weren't from my mother's. But no, my mother died without. <laughs> Nah, but I used to try, I used to fuck with my stepfather. I loved my stepfather, but he was a loan shark, and he would hide his money in different places in the house. So when I wanted to fuck with him, I would move his money. I would never steal it from him. I would move his money, and he would never say nothing. He would just go crazy. I would do this to him for fucking weeks, and then something happened between us. I went to work for him, selling flowers on Eighty Sixth Street and Broadway. We would sell gladiolos, and one night I felt he undercut me, so I started robbing for him. I, like I'd take a, a hundred off the top, and he would have his rubber bands, and he would always put like a marking on them, and I would lure him downstairs one way or another. I'd make a fire in the kitchen or something, and while he was turning up, I hit him for a hundred dollar bill. And one time I never forget, I was robbing him, and the hundred dollar bill rubber band blew up. And there was hundreds floating, and he caught me. He's like, you oh. motherfucker. 
It was fucking crazy. Do you ever notice this when you go around life and your journey in life, you haven't met too many people like yourself? Oh. No. I think where I came from. I have a lot to do it. You know, I went out in, where was I at? I'm in England or Sweden somewhere, and I'm talking to a young lady. I'm young, I'm like 23 at the time, so I'm talking to a young lady, and she's talking about wonderful things her and her family did. Or, and she said, what did you do when you were a young kid? What were you like? And I thought, you said, rob people houses. I said, <laughs> I stopped playing. She said, what were you like? I said, that's what I did. I robbed houses and stuff, snatched people's jewelry and purses and stuff. I was, uh, I didn't get arrested 38 times. But, you know, in that in that area where I lived, yeah, we had police contact. But they would throw you in the backseat of the car and give you a ride home yeah. or punch you in the stomach. You know, they would smack you in the face. Cops were different back then. But the worst thing I did at that age, in the eighth grade, people were moving into the house across the street from me, right, Mike? And they had, like, New York license plate. So I knew they had to go back to New York to get their shit. So on the second load... Me and my buddies watched them, and I broke into the house and robbed a couple things. But I took the kid's stereo. The kid had a badass oh, Fisher man. with some fucking blau punk. Not, not blau punk, but Fisher speakers and the 8-track with the cassette and the thing. I mean, I was living life. It's 75, and I robbed this motherfucker. I'm like 12 or 13. Wow. They come back. They call the police. I got the stereo set up in my bedroom. Guess what happened? I ended up becoming friends with the kid. I would go to his house and eat. Then he would come to my house and eat. And then he, I, he wasn't allowed in my bedroom. For two years, we were friends, but I never invited him up to him. He would always say, how come I never saw your stereo? You don't want to see it. <laughs> and then they moved back to the Bronx. They were Puerto Rican. They said, fuck New Jersey. Oh, man, shit. Jersey City where all the Puerto Ricans at. Oh, that Puerto Ricans are all over that beautiful fucking city, bro. And now they got Dominicans up and down. Uh, aren't they beautiful I, people? Are beautiful. Beautiful. They fucking, uh, I love that whole area. I'm, I'm excited about going back for a few weeks. It's been a long fucking time since 93. Every time I go to New York, it's just for fucking three days and I get out of there. And to be back there in April and May, the weather's fucking nice. No humidity yet. That June shit. That June shit, you could sh fucking kill your mother in that shit. Right, <laughs> that June sweating. humidity shit. Buying the ices, the ices, buying the ice, yeah. You had to sleep with a sheet, sweating. all the windows open, yeah, a fucking sweating. fan, on, on a sheet naked. What, what did you call that stuff? Pirawa. On the, the iron stuff you come and hang out on, you put our clothes on. The fire escape. The yeah, fire escape, yeah, yeah, yeah. Escape. I thought you were talking about the, the Puerto Rican snow no. cone. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.